Okay, let's talk about the task task, and specifically, we're going to be talking about the math section on the task. So, if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the task, and that is outstanding. And uh, as you well know, well, maybe you don't know, but I assume that you do, the task um, is essentially uh, more or less the same as the GED test, and there's another test out there called the high set. But basically, these are all ways that you can get your high school equivalency, okay? If you didn't uh, finish high school for whatever reason, all right, you can take the GED, all right? Depends on what state you're in and if it offers these tests, but uh, just kind of just giving you an overview uh, for those of you who may not know that the task it was, um, these, these tests here are pretty, uh, fairly new. I mean, uh, they're not brand, brand new, but they've been out there for, uh, for a few years, okay, maybe uh, four, five, six years, the time of this video, but the GED has been around forever. I mean, literally maybe like 70 years. <laughs> uh, the GED has been around quite some time, but just a little background history on it. The task, uh, uh, don't think that, you know, hey, you're taking a task means that, oh, you're not, you're not going to be taking the GED. Effectively, all these tests are, are giving you um, pathways and opportunities, and there's a lot of similarities to them to get your high school equivalency. Now, um, a couple of big changes here that you need to be familiar with. We're going to get into this practice problem here in a second. But back around the 20, I want to say 2014 time range, 2013, 2014, uh, the GED went through a major overhaul, uh, if you will. And uh, more or less, I think it's it, it's definitely geared now more towards those people that might be going to college, okay? So uh, it was kind of, uh, the GED kind of had a bad reputation uh, somewhat back years and years and years ago. Like, oh, you passed your GED, people didn't really, uh, I don't want to say respect it as much, Um you know, it was still a big thing. Hey, you got your GED, you got your high school diploma, but people maybe thought, oh, it was easy to pass it or you could just quickly study for it, that kind of thing. That's really what I'm trying to communicate, right? So uh, people maybe didn't take it as serious in terms of their studying. They're like, oh, I'll just brush up and then I'll pass and take the GED. Well, that all kind of changed back in 2014. The GED, all right, um, in, uh, specifically with the math section, is much more challenging, okay, in my opinion, all right? There is, you know, we're talking about high school level math, but there's a good amount of algebra, geometry, you know, on the GED. And uh, with that being said, same thing on the task and high set. So, uh, and I bring all this up because if you um, are in a state that offers you the, uh, the task, GED, or high set, you know, the format's different, the cost's a little bit different, and there's some different rules, but just know that you're going to be facing uh, basically the same level of mathematics, more or less, which is high school level math, not just basic math. You're going to have to know, really, really know some algebra and geometry, okay? Uh, so you, that means you're going to have to prepare, and that's what this video is about. All right, so with that being said, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last many, many, many years, I've constructed several full comprehensive online math courses to include a task math prep course. Super comprehensive, been used by a lot of people uh, successfully. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. So if that interests you, if you like my teaching style, something you definitely want to check out. Also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you consider subscribing. Uh, I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. And if you end up liking this video, please can uh, consider smashing that like button. All right, let's get to our problem here. Now, of course, I'm going to solve the problem. All right, I'm going to simplify it, but I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to see what you can do with it. So here we have some algebra stuff, right? So negative 3, uh, and this means negative 3 times 2x plus 4. Plus, I got some brackets. I got some other stuff going on in here, right? What I'd like you to do is to fully simplify this, okay? Fully simplify that. Now, if you understand what I mean by that uh, in, in terms of directions, then pause the video and go ahead and do the problem. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of amplify those directions uh, so some of you out there can, you know, I want, I want you to try the problem before I solve it. Okay, so what I'm meaning by this, to fully simplify it, means that you're going to have to multiply here, you're going to have to multiply this, 
and then you're gonna have to kind of add up all the terms and make it as simple as possible. All right, so that's kind of the overview of what we're gonna be doing, right? You're gonna have to do some multiplication here, all right? You have to do some multiplication here, and then all those terms that are remaining, you wanna combine them up and kind of package this in to its most simplest form, all right? So that is the objective of the problem. And if you know, you know what to do, or if you think you can do some parts of the problem, go ahead and pause the video and just do what you think you can do, right? Uh, but with that being said, let me go ahead and uh, solve this now. And this is not gonna be a substitute for a complete full lesson, algebraic lesson on this. Of course, I'm gonna be reviewing some topics, but you know, don't substitute this as, oh, I'm going to be, you know, like a formal instruction on this, right? This is where you need to get into something like a, my, my math course or some of the organized, you know, math program, okay? You just don't want to be learning math randomly, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. You want to, you know, build up your math skills in a very specific kind of order, right? Math builds upon itself. I and mean, if you're over here, then you go back over here, over here, over here, you're not going to really get, you know, as far as you need to. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's focus on this part of the problem. We'll work from left to right. All right, so here we're gonna use something called the distributor property. This is a negative three. I'm gonna multiply it by this two X and this four. So negative three times two X is gonna be negative six X. Negative three times four is going to be a negative 12, right? So double check that. Three times two is six. This is gonna be negative. And three times four is 12. This is gonna be negative. Boom. Now, if you're confused here, again, this is not the video for me to explain every tiny little detail. You know, um, this is where you obviously, you know, just use this as feedback to get yourself in a good course. All right, now let's go ahead and deal with this part of the problem. So when you have big old brackets like this uh, in algebra, you have to do what's inside the bracket. So what's going on is we have two things and we're going to multiply, right? I'm going to multiply what we call this. This is a what we call binomial. I'm going to multiply that binomial times this binomial. And the way I can do that is something called FOIL, all right? So this stands for first, outer, inner, last, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first terms. So here's a binomial. This is the first, okay? All right, and this is the last this is the first and that is the last, all right? So you'll kind of get a quick crash course in the FOIL method. And this is uh, uh, the little kind of acronym steps we use to multiply binomials, okay? Binomial meaning two things here uh, in algebra. So let's go ahead and go with the F. So first, we're gonna multiply the first. So X times three X gives me a three X squared. All right, the outers are these guys. These are the outers, all right? All right, you can see these are on the outside. So x times negative two gives me a negative two x, all right? And then the i is the inner. So these are the inners, all right? So one times three x gives me a positive three x. And then we're gonna multiply the last. So remember, these were the, the last. So that's gonna be one times negative two, which gives me negative two. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify this. So we have this negative 6x. We'll rewrite all of our steps here. Nice and neat. All right, so 3x squared. I'm looking for anything that has another x squared in it. There isn't anything, so that's just going to be 3x squared. Now at this point, well, let's leave the brackets in. Okay, I'm going to leave the brackets in, and I'll remove them here in a second. Uh, so what we're going to do is still simplify this. But now here... Negative 2x and 3x, these are like terms because they both have an x, exactly an x in them. So this is an x and this is an x. That means we can combine them. So negative 2 plus a 3 is just 1. So this is just 1x, and then I have my little minus 2 there, my negative 2. All right, so I did my multiplication. And now at this point, you can just literally just drop the brackets because I'm done uh, uh, with all the multiplication inside. So now this is just a, a uh, uh, process of looking to combine like terms. So let's start from left to right. So here I have an X. Is there anything 
that has an x with it, all right? So just an x, not an x squared, not just x alone. So I'm looking, 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 looking. Oh, here's an x. So that means I could combine these two right here, right? Now, okay, I'll, I'll do that in a second, but let's just kind of go to our next thing. Here I have a number. Are there any other numbers? I'm looking, looking, looking. Oh, this is a number all by itself. This is a number all by itself. So I can combine those two. And then here, I'm like, what's left over? I have an x squared. Anything with x squared? Obviously not. So this is just kind of all by its lonely self. Now, in algebra, we like to write things from the highest power. So the highest power is this right here first. So this is going to be 3x squared. All right, so that's done. And now we'll go down to our x's. So I have a negative 6x and a 1x. So negative 6 plus 1 gives me a minus 5x, all right? So if you are confused with positive and negative numbers, obviously you need to learn that, right? And then here I'm left with our numbers. I have a negative 12 and a uh, negative 2. That gives me a negative 14. And that is my final answer, right? So our problem, if you recall, was all of this. And I said you have to fully simplify it. And the process of doing that is uh, knowing how to multiply, okay, um, algebraic uh, expressions, which involve things like the distributive property and the FOIL method and even some other things. And then we have to understand combining like terms and positive and negative numbers, et cetera. I would call this a very foundational algebra problem, something that all of you should know how to do, especially if you expect to be fully prepared for the task. And again, I would call this a pretty easy problem. Uh, now, if you thought this was, you know, extremely like difficult, don't, um, don't panic, right? Uh, it just means that you just have to learn this stuff. You are capable of learning this. One thing that I like to do uh, also uh, when, it's, when I'm talking to um, uh, those of you out there taking GED, TASK, uh, high set or you know, especially adult learners, or people who have, for some reason, their education was disrupted, okay? And if you didn't fit, get your high school diploma, something significant happened in those years to, to, to disrupt your education, all right? You cannot feel guilty, bad, look back. It, well, of course, you might have regret about uh, uh, those things, all right? But the point is this. You cannot associate who you are now with what happened to the past. You have to leave the past in the past, okay? So your mindset, all right, has to be strong, all right? And I can tell you right now, there is a 99.999999999% absolute probability that you can do excellent on the task, okay? But if your mindset is still living way back here and you still associate math or you still associate yourself as, oh, I struggled, I'm... Uh, I didn't do well, I can't do this, I can do that. Listen, then you then you are going to really kind of live your your thoughts are going to manifest itself in in reality and you're going to do poorly, okay? So you have to always check your mindset. Always check your mindset, okay? And I can tell you right now, don't worry about what you what you do or don't remember from, you know, how much school you got way back then, right? That's that's, you know, that's great. If you do remember some algebra and geometry, hey, that's fine, right? But the main thing is this. You are motivated. You're committed. It's critical that you do get your high school uh, equivalency, but you have to be disciplined and you got to work a good plan. You, can, you don't do it by yourself. You really do need uh, a good program to study from, all right? So hopefully this video uh, has helped you out and encouraged you to do the right thing. But let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link to my task math prep course um, in the description of this video. So if you like my teaching style, then you're going to really have my full complete math instruction um, in that program. Again, uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please uh, subscribe uh, if you are interested in all the stuff that I do in mathematics. Uh, if you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. How long has it been since you've been in school? Um, do you like math? Do you hate math? Are you trying to go back to college? Maybe you need your uh, high school equivalency for vocational training. Whatever the case is, uh, any feedback is good feedback. But I can just tell you right now, okay, you can pass the task, all right? You can be amazing in math, all right? So don't 
associate, don't, uh, please, if you are one of these people that are, think to yourself, I hate math, I, uh, I'm bad at math, I can never learn this, there's just no way. You have to stop that. You have to stop that. All right. You, you may not, I'm not asking you to love math. All right. That's not the point. All right. You don't have to like, you know, lie to yourself, but you have to learn it. Okay. And you, you, believe me, when you learn it and you achieve and you overcome this, it's going to have manifest itself in such positive ways in your life. It's all the effort you put into it is going to pay back, you know, a thousand fold. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in, in, um, your education and your mathematics adventures. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.